what's up guys welcome back to my channel it's been a minute and I'm so excited to be back updating you guys on what's going on with my TTC journey as you guys know I have been waiting to get my HSG test done um, to find out if I had any tubal blockages so that's what today's video is all about my experience I recorded some clips while I was at the hospital having that procedure done I'm sharing everything that I can remember it was just done yesterday so I'm here to share with you guys today what I've experienced how I'm feeling all of the details about the whole process so let's get right into the video all right you guys so for my HSG test I knew I wanted to kind of vlog the experience but I wanted to do like a sit down video letting you guys know what I experienced how I was feeling and all that stuff so I got a little bit of vlog footage from yesterday but I'm also going to sit and tell you how everything went for me my results all of that stuff so I'll start with how I was feeling before I was very nervous and I vlogged that whole experience so i'll insert those clips of my feelings before good morning guys today is wednesday february 6th and i am in the parking garage at the hospital because today i am about to get my hsd test done and my nerves are starting to settle in i am really nervous actually I, I actually have like the bubble guts going on right now <laughs> I don't know why I'm so nervous I don't know I just don't want any more bad news you know so so before I had the procedure done I was really really nervous you guys and I sat in my car with the bubble guts I was super early I was there like two hours early I thought my appointment was supposed to be at 12 o'clock when I got there they were like no we don't start until 12:30, and then I went to radiology and they were like no we don't start till 1 so I got there at like 10 45 in the morning so I just hung around at the hospital I talked to my mom my mom prayed for me I sat and read a book I just kind of tried to not freak out because I had started to freak out once I hit DC area if you guys are just finding my channel and you don't know I live in the Hampton Roads area of Virginia but I'm receiving treatment up in DC Maryland area at a military hospital for fertility so I have to commute three and a half hours yes I can go to a fertility clinic in my area however it's a lot more expensive than it is at the military hospital so I'd rather just take that commute and save money where I can because this process can be a long one we don't know how long it's gonna be and I don't want to deplete all of my money in one treatment that's why I'm commuting to a military hospital to have all of my procedures done as it relates to fertility I hope that clears everything up but once um they called me back I really got nervous um I went into the radiology it's, it's like the x-ray room it's like any other x-ray room I'll insert the clip yeah it's pretty much just like any other x-ray room I undressed from the bottom down they had me lay out on the little x-ray bed thing you know the routine scoot your bottom to the end of the bed open your legs wide for the world you know the drill if you have done these treatments and stuff and then they explained the process to me what was to come um, but once I saw the um, thing the balloon catheter thing that they use to insert into your cervix I really started to freak out all I could think about was other YouTube videos everybody telling me how excruciating it was for them to have that balloon inserted and so I was just like oh my god so I was breathing and I was like I have to get this done I didn't come all this way not to get this done and um, they let me know that I would experience a little bit of cramping and all that stuff so I was like okay they told me it will be fine people have it done every day it doesn't take that long five minutes we're done the hospital I went to is a teaching hospital you guys the doctor was moving I feel like slow and maybe it was slow because I was so uncomfortable but she was moving very slow through the process teaching and I was annoyed but I was like you know 
everybody has to learn it's the doctor doing everything on me so I feel confident in my procedure so they inserted the catheter they let me know as they were doing well first they inserted the speculum you know that's already uncomfortable and inserted a speculum so that they can see your cervix and then they insert inserted this catheter thing by now you I've inserted a picture somewhere on the screen somewhere so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about this thing was long I feel like at first I was saying it was like from the tips of your fingers down to your elbows but it's not that long it's maybe from like the tip of your finger to like I don't know the middle of your arm it's about this long that thing that they and it has a balloon on the end of it but it's really 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 skinny it's really skinny it's not a needle or anything it's just this really skinny balloon contraption catheter situation they have so they let me know when they were inserting that they inserted this thing and then they let me know okay we're gonna blow it up with some air it's gonna feel a little crampy it honestly felt like mm, that heaviness kind of crampy not it's just more of like a nagging kind of feeling it's not anything painful um like right before your cycle is coming you know how your uterus might feel a little bit heavier kind of achy I don't know where it's not painful it's tolerable but you notice that your uterus is there that's what the sensation was like for me and then they let me know that the worst part would probably be the dye that they would insert into my uterus and um it was <laughs> It was the worst part. Now, there was an x-ray technician there who had me. I was laying on the x-ray bed, and then there was this x-ray imaging screen thing that they hover over you. you. If you've had x-rays done of your chest, pelvis, any of this stuff, and you had to lay down for it, you know you've been through this before. Um, but I laid on the bed. They hovered the imaging machine, like, over my chest and pelvis area and um the lady was an older lady bless her heart but she did not put it correctly over me so they weren't she wasn't able to take images of of like my pelvis like she was supposed to before they inserted the dye she did some test runs of the imaging to make sure and then i don't know if she moved or what but she was like oh i need you to turn to the wall a little bit now when they insert the dye into your uterus, they told me, okay, get ready. It's going to be a little bit of a cramp. Here comes the dye or whatever. And as soon as they insert it, I was like, they told me to take a deep breath. And I was like, <gasps> that was the only thing that I could get out because it was more than a cramp okay it wasn't a oh i feel like that crampy sensation my uterus is throbbing it was that with the feeling of somebody lighting a match in my uterus it burned it hurt it was just like instant whoosh it didn't last a long time. It was very uncomfortable. It felt like a long time, but honestly, I feel like it was less than a minute. But in the middle of all of that pain and stuff happening, my mind is only focused on my uterus right now. The x-ray technician is telling me that I needed to tilt myself and turn on my side. And I'm like, lady, do you know what this feels like? This hurts. Oh, it, I was just... I was just like this is very painful ma'am and then they still had this catheter thing at this point the speculum had been removed already but that balloon cath catheter thing was still in there just in case I would have to get more dye put in so that if she didn't get the imaging correctly I was very annoyed <laughs> I was very annoyed with her and then I didn't want to do I thought I was gonna kick my doctor my doctor was a very petite lady and they had raised the x-ray bed so like my legs and vagina was like really up in her face so yeah it was just a lot happening at that point during the 
imaging the x-ray technician was like oh it looks like there's an air bubble right there and the doctor was like um pretty much like I got this you know and um she was like okay I think we got the images you know she, the, the, the x-ray technician showed her on the screen and I could see it because the the screen was like hovering near my head off on the side of the x-ray bed and the doctor was looking at it and the x-ray technician and I could like see a little bit of it but I was just in just so uncomfortable that I just was ready to get you know off of the bed the doctor was like okay I think we got the images we need it I had to lay there for a minute just in case they needed to do it again once they really reviewed everything and so um she let me know that i got good news i got good results there were no blockages so my tubes are open everything looked good the only thing she mentioned was that um uh, we're not sure if it's a air bubble that happened to pass through your uterus or if it's a fibroid or a polyp if you guys know from my past i had a hysteroscopy done last may of 2018 and they found a polyp and the results of that polyp once it was sent for testing they let me know that there were precancerous cells in the polyp and that was very scary my doctor was so happy that she found it and was able to remove it so immediately i start thinking about all of that when the doctor let me know that it may be a polyp there so she let me know that um if i had time you know to stay that she would like to do a saline sonohistogram um and she was like if you feel like it's too much if you've been through enough today i understand we can schedule you to come back i was like no i didn't drove three hours and 30 minutes to get here let's get it all taken care of because if i have to schedule something and come back i'm gonna freak myself out in that time period about what is it is it a polyp is cancer developing in my uterus like all of these thoughts so I was like no let's do it today I have time if you have time I have time so she was like okay I have another patient after you get in the same procedure but I will um and I knew who the lady was because they called both of us back at the same time or whatever for HSGs she was like I will take care of this patient and if you have time I'll do the saline sauna histogram it's a lot better then this that you went through i promise you it's a whole lot better so i was like okay as long as it's not the same thing i i mean even if it was i was gonna get it done just because peace of mind so um i went upstairs she told me go upstairs and let them know to fit you in or whatever that you know i'll be handling the sailing sonal histogram for you and so i went they sent me to this scheduling lady and she was just like oh we don't have any appointments today so you're i'm just gonna schedule you and you could come back and i was like no the doctor just told me to come up here and if i had time she was going to do it for me today if you don't want to schedule me i will sit out in the waiting room and i will wait for somebody to cancel but the doctor said i could get it done today and she was just like oh well okay then if the doctor said that she can take you then she can take you then so i was like thank you so um, I went and sat down in the waiting room and you guys, not even 10 minutes had passed, you guys. And they came back out and was like, okay, you can come back now. She's ready for you. And I was like, see, you had the space available and you just didn't want to schedule me. You was going to waste my time and have me come back, have me worried and stuff. So I wanted to smack her. But I got in the room and it looked just like the regular room you would get your pap smear done in. I'll insert the clip of the room now here is let us pray you guys i'm so nervous i'm about to get my dress from the waist down so that i can get this salo saline sonal histogram done i just had the hsg test done we're gonna talk about it but on to the second test so I'll explain everything later if I haven't explained already before you see in this clip but let's get this done um, once the doctor came in I you know undressed from the bottom down they came in and then I saw that thing again the same balloon thing they had to use for 
the HSG they had to use for the saline sauna histogram and I was just like here we go that part wasn't bad let me just suck it up at this point my doctor I told you guys had a student with her the student I guess this was her first time using a speculum and trying to find your cervix I always assume that you just stick it in open the thing up and it's just right there in the middle she was saying that because I was on like an uh, incline my hips was up on a pillow or something when I got the other one it looked like it was it was a lot easier to find my cervix so she was like digging with this speculum and it was just poking I was just like oh everything was already like tender because I had just went through the HSG test with that dye once she found it you know she took the speculum she had that thing in there deep then she took the catheter she inserted it and then she took the speculum out and I think she pulled at it a little bit and she took it out so it had to do everything all over again grab another speculum grab another catheter thingy and she had to do it again so she was digging around digging around this time she put the speculum in there and it was very uncomfortable because I've never had them like take the speculum and prop it up between my crack I was just like this is very uncomfortable. So they took the, the catheter, they put the catheter um, through my cervix um, up into my uterus. This time she got it in there good and I could feel her like through my pelvis. I could feel it, feel her poking around with this thing. And it's plastic, but I could feel her just kind of like, like with this pen, if I was in there just kind of jabbing around that's what it felt like just it was just something okay it wasn't painful it was just annoying and I was just like will you hurry up so she it, she filled the little catheter balloon thing with air and then they came with this the saline the saline was a breeze if you ever have to get a saline sound histogram it's easy it's not painful at all it's a little bit of discomfort with that speculum and the catheter thing being in at the same time but they pull the speculum out once they place that little catheter thing so um but once they start doing the saline it's fine so I'm not even sure the camera cut off on me I'm not sure where it stopped so after you know they they inserted the one they, they inserted the saline they checked my uterus took all their images and then once they took all of their images or whatever they um told me i could get dressed i stood up and all of the fluid just came pouring out and it was funny to me to have feel like a faucet uh pretty much and the more i laughed the more it just kind of came out I was just like oh my god I had to go I went through like two pads quickly so they came back in afterwards let me know that I have a pile up on the top of my uterus and I have to get another hysteroscopy done and the earliest that it can get done is March 29th so I have to wait more I have to have more waiting more Things need to be done for what they can see there was only one pile up um, so they're gonna they have scheduled me for this hysteroscopy for March 29th I'm ready to get it over with I have more waiting I feel like my whole journey has been one long wait on top of waiting I asked I did ask my doctor about if I happen to conceive naturally on my own in that time what are the risks what should I be concerned about and she did let me know that the only thing she would be concerned about is if an embryo, embryo tried to implant on the polyp then that could cause uh, another miscarriage for me um, so that is a little concerning but um, other than that she wouldn't have any issue with it being there if I have if an embryo happened to plant implant in another part of my uterus or whatever so with that being said I do plan to try to conceive 
naturally um, because we aren't doing any fertility treatments until after I get the hysteroscopy done. So I probably won't be doing any type of fertility treatment until April. So I have more of a delay, but I'm not angry about it. I'm not frustrated. I'm surprisingly optimistic about what's to come for me. So I feel very good about it. I feel very, very good about it. My only concern or the thing that's in the back of my mind, you guys already know, I had um, a hysteroscopy before and a polyp was fine, found. And on in that polyp were uh, precancerous cells. So I'm just hoping that things aren't getting worse. Over the next month or so, I hope things don't turn into anything else. I hope that there are no cancerous cells in this one. Um, and they can just remove it, remove it, and you know we're all free. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on. So other updates I wanted to let you guys know are next week I have an appointment with my general endocrinologist to find out what's causing my hyperthyroidism. If it's Graves' disease or not, you guys know I had that thyroid uptake test done. Um, my appointment isn't until next week, so I'll find out more next week on what's going on with that and I'll let you guys know next Friday what those results are from my doctor there. My doctor and my reproductive endocrinologist at the military hospital, they want me to come back um, after I get those results to come up with a plan, like a treatment plan with them on um, what they think I should be doing next, what they, how they want to move forward with my treatment based on the results of my thyroid uptake scan and I get those next week. I am gonna still try to conceive naturally. We figured out the sperm freezing. I let you guys know back in January that we would have to look into sperm freezing because my husband is in the Navy and he will be leaving on and off quite a bit. And so to make sure that I'm covered and he leaves some sperm behind, we are gonna do sperm freezing. Originally, the doctor told us that we would have to do a, use a cryo bank out like a civilian cryobank. But yesterday I went and talked to the lab myself and they let me know that they will store semen there for us if we're doing IUI. And they also let me know that um, it's a whole lot cheaper than what it was for the cryobank on the civilian side. So for the civilian side, we called Fairfax Cryobank in Northern Virginia and um, it was $640 to initiate the process of you know sperm freezing and the, the process of it and then it was an, it would be another forty dollars a month for storage um, through the military f treatment facility or the military hospital it is three hundred sixty dollars for the year so clearly I'm gonna be going with the military treatment facility and I've scheduled my husband an appointment. Hopefully he does not have to go out to sea at that time, but I've scheduled him an appointment for March to go and get his semen analysis and semen storage done. And then I also, they also wrote a script for him to have some lab work done, just checking for um, diseases and stuff like that before they store. He has to have it done within seven days of storing semen. He can't have it done outside of that seven day range and it has to be done before they store. I wanted to let you guys know I am now using these um, Ollie brand prenatals with folic acid and DHA. Uh, one thing I do notice about these is that there is no iron in them. I do have some iron supplements but I don't want to add any supplements in until I talk to my general endocrinologist uh, next week. I'll ask them what dosages and stuff I should be taking um, just because uh, I feel like they're gonna you know finally put me on some medication to help me regulate things and I don't want any supplements to interfere with medication or whatever and another thing I want to talk to you guys about is because I'm gonna be pretty much waiting I won't have many updates for you guys I will follow my two-week wait through this trying today I'm on cycle day like 10 usually when I ovulate is like cycle day 
like 16, 18, somewhere in there. I don't know. I have had a few times where I've ovulated on cycle day 14. Um, so I will post that stuff, like keeping you guys posted on like my two week wait and how I'm doing or whatever, because this will be the first time that I'm actually trying to conceive at all in a long time so yeah I haven't been trying to conceive at all I've just pretty much been waiting for the last couple months so now that I know my tubes are open and stuff I'm gonna try to conceive naturally I will document that process and share with you guys but once that's over I won't really have any updates and I want to be able to still post things on my channel so I might be posting a lot of like random things that I'm personally interested in maybe like book reviews or vlogs or you know more routine videos or whatever so I don't know exactly what's gonna pop up on my channel I do have a lot of videos that I filmed months ago weeks ago like I have a lot of videos that just have never made it to my channel so I'll probably be posting a lot of randomness until I get to until I'm about to have my hysteroscopy done or when you know what up until I'm updated again because now I don't have anything if you guys have any suggestions or videos you would like me to do relating to trying to conceive like if you would like to hear my husband's thoughts on trying to conceive and his experience with sperm freezing or whatever just kind of leave those suggestions down in the comment section down below i would appreciate it um other than that though i don't really have any more updates for you guys i don't know i have been drinking a lot of tea and warm foods and stuff oh I, so I should have told you guys sorry my uterus is very achy today uh, the day after my HSG was done it's very achy um, I've been doing a lot of sneezing and stuff so I just keep grabbing and holding on to it just because it seems like it was hurting more it hurts more when I stand up so today I am in a very comfortable mode I'm not doing anything today I'm just trying to chill because my uterus is achy and uncomfortable and I don't want to take pills. I don't like taking pills. I don't like taking medicine. So I'm just trying to like ease it out. I'm going to sit with a heat pad, heating pad. I'm drinking tea. This is the No Stress Tea by Lipton's. I really like it. It's cinnamon, chamomile, and lavender. Really love this. I sweetened it with agave and that's it. And... I love 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 this stuff it's so good but I want warm things going on while my uterus is trying to heal you know oh another thing is I've been trying to drink more water I've been trying to get in that hundred ounces of fluids mostly water and I've been doing pretty good um, I feel like my skin is responding to it really well I do have one bump kind of under the skin here but I think it's hormonal because it's I don't know I think it's a hormonal something going on because ovulation is kind of coming and I'm also noticing egg white cervical mucus since yesterday but I'm not sure if it's due to the procedure I had done yesterday or if it's due to like ovulation is coming early for me and you know I don't really know what to expect so that's all I really have you guys I don't really have any more updates. If you guys have any questions for me, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section. I hope you guys are all doing well on your own journeys. I haven't had any updates from you guys, so I'm hoping everything is going good on your end. But if you have hit any roadblocks, I hope you know you're able to get over those quickly and your weight isn't held up as long as mine's is being held up and um yeah i'm praying for you guys thank you for all the prayers all the love and support for me to all of my new subscribers welcome to my channel if this is your first time on my channel go ahead and click the subscribe button join the family because i'm gonna have this baby at some point and i want you guys to join me on my journey so yeah i think that's it i'm gonna stop 
rambling now. I hope you guys have found this video helpful. If you're about to get an HSG or a saline sauna histogram, I hope you get the best results possible. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.